The Aztecs were Mayans and chocolate way back when, and why did it take until the 1940s for chocolate to become spreadable? Today on Raspberry Rewind, we're making a delicious chocolatey concoction that will take us through the history of chocolate, from the beginning to becoming a spread and to the only chocolate museum in London. Well, it's good to realise, first of all, that and up until the 19th century, chocolate was mostly consumed as a drink. So when did it become a bar, and when did it become spreadable? We're going to answer that question, and we're going to make the very first chocolate spread. Think of chocolate spread today, and you think of Nutella. Nutella was the first widely commercially available chocolate spread, and today it makes up a commanding 54% of chocolate spread sales, but it only hit markets in the 1940s. To answer our questions, I've come to the Brixton Chocolate Museum in London to meet with Laura Ryman, an educator at the museum who also paints with chocolate. Chocolate, first of all, comes from a tree, and the tree originated in South America in the Amazon rainforest. And then somehow it migrated up to Mesoamerica. The people that used to live there, the Olmecs and the Mayans and later the Aztecs, are the ones still credited for being the inventors of chocolate, some kind of drink they made out of cocoa beans. How was chocolate enjoyed in Mesoamerica? So they would ferment their beans and roast them, grind them on a flat stone into a kind of paste, and they would add water and spices like cinnamon, chili, and achiote, which made the chocolate look really red because there was ritual link between blood and chocolate. And yeah, chocolate was a sacred drink to them. So it was also not something you would drink casually. It was really used in rituals. And so it had no sugar, it was quite bitter for a European palate. But everything changed when the Spanish set sail for the Americas. So chocolate must have arrived somewhere in the 16th century to Europe. They don't know exactly when, but it must have been through the Spanish. And actually the Spanish kept it a kind of a secret for 80 years. For a long time chocolate, when it first arrived to Europe, was considered a medicine first uh, before food. So they were kind of figuring out then how this medicine fit in their humoral system that there was their way of curing people at that time. But it was like divided into cold and moist and hot. And so they were trying to figure out what cocoa did to our body. I think after 80 years, they kind of figured out what to do with it and they added sugar to it. But actually it's, it's quite interesting that for a long time, the Spanish kept the recipe quite close to the Mayan Aztec uh, recipes and then slowly it started spreading to other parts of Europe through the courts. For example, a Spanish princess would be married to a French king and she would take her chocolate with her. And so for a long time it was circulating amongst nobility and normal people didn't really have chocolate or know about chocolate. And at the center of the spreadable chocolate story is Turin, Italy's third biggest city. I think Italy was always big on like chocolate confectionaries, but not as much on mass-produced chocolate. So they were more like into the spreads and the, and the filled chocolates. The most prized chocolate of Turin is the Gianduja. It's a mixture of chocolate and hazelnuts and sugar. Apparently it was invented in the beginning of the 19th century when Napoleon had a trade embargo. Cocoa beans, cocoa imports from the UK couldn't enter the mainland. So there was a shortage of chocolate and then some chocolate maker in Turin thought, well, I still have some hazelnuts, so I'll just add that to the mixture and then I can still sell chocolate. Some European countries would deem this innovation derivative, but as Laura explains, Italy was always experimenting with food, going back to chocolate as a drink. So they would prepare their drinking chocolate, for example, with almonds or hazelnuts. And the north of Italy, by Turin, is really famous for good quality hazelnuts, and its inclusion in the Gianduja made a really soft, not quite spreadable though. So when does that happen? In 1828, a crucial part of the puzzle was invented. Some Dutch chemist named Van Houten invented a press to press the cocoa butter out of the cocoa mass. And that was the beginning of the mass production of chocolate, really, because then uh, cocoa powder became a lot cheaper. 
and in the 1870s, the stage was set for mass-produced chocolate. Daniel Peter uh, got the brilliant idea to mix milk powder that had just been invented by Neste. So then milk chocolate was born. So that all happened in the 19th century and that allowed chocolate to become a solid product. And this is where Janduya bridges the gap. By adding a nut paste to a chocolate, the chocolate becomes softer because the oil in the hazelnuts stays liquid at a lower temperature than the cocoa butter. So the Janduya was actually the predecessor of what we now know as Nutella. The Ferrero company first launched this pasta di Janduya, I think in the 1950s, and then they called it Super Crema, but it was still not quite it. So in 1964 they launched Nutella which was based on the Janduya recipe, but with more vegetable fat added to it and milk powder. Made it softer and cheaper because it's produced with palm oil. That's not necessarily a good thing. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that made it highly popular. Right. Yeah. And now it's time to make, compare and test the first ever chocolate spread. It's such a lovely day today. We thought we'd film a recipe rewind outside. We've already got our ingredients here. We've got blanched hazelnuts, we've got melted chocolate, sugar, and some milk. And that is a perfect base for your chocolate spread. Add 300 grams of hazelnuts to a food processor. If you find they're too dry to blend, add dashes of milk. Right, we've got a nice uniform paste there. It smells delicious. It smells like the beginning of a chocolate spread. What we need to do, you need to be gentle with it at this point. You don't want to agitate it too much. We are going to fold out our hazelnut and the last of the paste. Now, of course, you can't have a chocolate spread without chocolate. Key maestro. Ah. Okay, so this has been recently melted. We've melted 120 grams of dark chocolate. Gently mix this together so we've got sugar and you might be alarmed by the amount of sugar that's in here we'll be using around 200 grams and you want to do it gradually pour the chocolate over the mix and slowly add the milk until it gets to a good consistency you know you can do it with measurements but also at the same time consistency the right consistency requires you having a good eye. It's coming together. What well, you would have done in the olden days, when they first made Jantuya in the 1860s, you would have had cocoa mass, so it's, it's the little blocks before it gets turned into the powder. Spread, as you know, was made in the 1940s, so a chocolate bar was available at the time. So just make sure it's dark chocolate, because at the time they didn't use milk chocolate. And now my maestro's coming in with some toast to do a little taste test. Now look how smooth Nutella is compared to that. That's because Nutella, if you look at the list of ingredients on the back, you find out a lot doing that. It's only 13% hazelnuts. At first the hazelnuts were the economical thing over chocolate, and now it's sugar and palm oil. So, let's try this. It looks like a Ferrero Rocher, and how appropriate that is. Nutella, of course, it's good. Mmm. It's like eating a Ferrero Rocher on toast. Oh my, that is good. Look at this, it's already sort of hardened. It's stopped. There's more hazelnuts in it, there's more taste. It's not just oily, it's not as thick, it's not as rich. I could have so much more of that. I think you should definitely try it at home because it's really interesting to see how the, not just the economics of chocolate spread has affected what it tastes like, the texture. This is the first chocolate spread in the world. And now I'm gonna eat the whole thing. <laughs> if you wanna try out this historic recipe and make it for yourself, see the description below for our website where you can find the how-to and further reading on every Recipe Rewind dish. To stay updated and for more exclusive content, follow us on our Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Recipe Rewind.